stop. Are you confused? A lot of us are. The food industry throws a lot of these terms at us and we don't know what they mean. We don't know what's good, bad, whether it's just all marketing hype. Sadly, the fact is that most of the food we eat today owes more to scientists and laboratories than it does to local farmers. My grandfather was a butcher and after he retired, my mother would tell him about things that she was seeing in the stores with meat and he never really said much. He just sort of slowly nodded his head and this a knowing smile came across his face. He knew that our food was changing. From the standpoint of how we eat and how we feel satiated or satisfied at a meal, mm -hmm. what part does flavor play in that and does the does food having less flavor mm -hmm. mean that we might be eating more in search of something to satisfy us? Yeah, I think it's possible. But we do know that when people are given smaller, more flavorful portions of food, that they're satisfied. Would you like to help me out? Sure. Okay. If you were looking at these two tomatoes, just based on how they looked, which one would you choose? Oh, I'd pick that one. The smaller one? Yeah. Okay. How long have you, uh, how long have you had the farm here uh, in Oshawa? Uh, we bought the land in 1969. 69? But we started the market in 1979. 79. And did your family farm in Italy as well? Yes. Yeah? So you've been farming your whole All life? All my life. Yeah? Yes. Yeah? And you grow, uh, you're, you're a vegetable farmer. Yes. And um, you grow heirloom tomatoes. Yep. And this is this is one of your heirlooms. Yes, this is pretty close to brand wine, but the, they're earlier. That's earlier than brandy wine. Yeah. Brandy wine is later. Yeah, eighty days. Eighty days. This is about six days. Okay, and uh, the the name is Belmonte. Belmonte. Yeah. Sounds Italian. It sounds Italian. They come from there. Oh yeah. My my nephew bring it to me the seeds. Oh, very good. Yeah, yeah. How many years ago? Three years ago. Taste that one. This one. Yep. Is it this? Yep. Now taste that one. Which one tastes better? That one. The bigger one. Yep. Okay. That, oops. That is your typical grocery store, quote unquote, on the vine tomato. This one. That one. This is a local field grown heirloom tomato. Yeah. Really? Yep. Wow, and look what it looks like. Yeah. Can I touch it? Why'd you lie to me? Yeah. You lied Pretty to beaten me, up. <laughs> this is delicious. Now, with your heirloom tomatoes, you you harvest the seeds each year, and, and you yes. you dry them, and you carry over to the next year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How do you know how far back you can trace some of your seeds? How many years? You can do for a long time. Yeah. 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 But you have to pick the nice one. Right. And they have to be real ripe. Like myself, I've done already from the greenhouse. Uh huh. I, I leave the, the best one, and that's what I do. We have a lot of food, and it doesn't taste that great. Right. Right? It's highly processed. It's It kind of goes down easy if you think of fast food, and that it's initially palatable, um, but it's not that nutritious. And we also just value sort of, uh, you know, the most bang for your buck. And you do uh, you do poultry, you do beef, and you do pork. Yeah. And your uh, your, your poultry, uh, your chickens, are pretty much all heritage uh, varieties. Heritage heritage based. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, now, uh, a typical grocery store chicken weighs say three to four pounds, and it takes on a on a factory farm it takes. 
six weeks to get to that size. How how long does it take your chickens being uh, pasture raised to, uh, to get to, to get to what we'll call market weight? Yeah, usually like sixteen to eighteen weeks. Sixteen to eighteen weeks. Take them out, and they're about a three pound bird. Right. So it's basically almost triple the time. Yeah. yeah. And your your birds are all completely free range. Yep. Yep. They get locked up at night. For right. predator control, but sure. during the day, yeah. Yep. And um, and they can come and go freely in, in between these uh, these pens. Yep. Yep. They can go wherever they want. Yep. Okay. If if our food has fewer nutrients, right? Then are we having to eat more? in order to, to get proper nutrient values. But yes, if in general our food is not meeting our nutritional needs, then we have a problem. If you are choosing, having to choose a tomato, yes. which of these two tomatoes would you would you pick? Just based on, just based solely on how they look. On appearance, that one for sure. The, the smaller one? Yeah, the smaller one. Okay, taste that one. Now taste that one. Which one tastes better? It's way better. That one's way yeah. better? When in fact getting something that tastes better and is smaller or maybe doesn't look as polished because it is organic, um, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that that would be more satisfying. You're a, you're a cattle farmer. Yes. Yeah. And you are, your farm is certified organic. Yes, I'm certified organic. Right. Yes. And what does... What does certified organic mean from the standpoint of cattle farming? Okay, certified, you can have organic, and that could be just the same as I am. The certified means I'm inspected by an independent person, paid by me, but hired by another person, and in my case it's ProCert, that is my certifying body, and uh, have all the rules and regulations that I gotta follow, but he, she will come to my farm, check all my property, check all my animals, look over all my books that I have to keep track of what comes off what field, what day, how much it got, and everything else. So it's that independent person coming to verify that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, be certified organic. And um, that's that's part of, that's, that's, a, uh, that's a CFIA program, yes, right? Yes, it is. Now it's under the, the umbrella of the CFIA. So in order to try and get flavor into our food, we're right. brining it, we're, we're putting rubs on it, we're putting sauces on it, yeah. all sorts of things that, that add, add uh, superficial flavor mm -hmm. um, and also add calories. Is that one of the things that may be contributing to our obesity problem in North America? I mean, I think the use of, let's just call them condiments generally. Sure is no doubt contributing to the obesity epidemic. It may not be the main contributor, but it's not helping matters. Right. You work with, uh, you work with uh, smaller farms. That's right, yeah. Uh, what do you look for when, you, when you're looking for a farm to, uh, to source from? So my main thing is I'm looking for, uh, for smaller family farms, like, like people that I can have a personal relationship with, uh, and also people that have a passion for what they do. So. Um, I find passionate people in no matter what venue they're, they're working in, uh, first of all that shows immediately. That, that's number one. I'm looking for people who like right off the bat are like, oh we do this and we do this because, and because of this and this and this and I've been doing this for X amount of years. Like anyone that can have that kind of immediate conversation with me shows me that they actually, they stand behind what they do um, and they have a real interest in, in promoting it. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing, and that goes hand in hand, is I want to be able to get answers to the questions that I have to ask. So I want to know, so first of all, like where the animal was raised, how it was raised on pasture and barn, how much time it spent on pasture, what it was fed, if it had a lot of corn or grain in its diet, if the animal ever got sick, and why, and what's the protocol for what, when that happens. Like all those kind of things, I, I expect to be um, uh, to get the answer right away. Muscle needs to work to have flavor. Mm -hmm. And 
So your birds, being that they're out and about all the time, uh, their their muscle is getting worked. So they are likely going to be more flavorful than uh, a, a bird that is raised in a barn or in a, in a battery cage. Yeah, I would agree. Um, but also of their diet. Their diet's going to be a huge variety of, of different types of grasses and different types of flowers and different types of bugs. Um, so I think the diet has a lot to do with it as well. Right. And definitely running around and exercise is just healthy overall and it's going to make it better flavor. Part of the, the, the requirements to be certified organic is that the, the cattle have to be outside. Yeah, they have to be outside deeming bad weather. It's up to them. My cattle are always outside, but they have the option in the winter time or bad weather to go into barns and they're the boss. Also, I can't use fertilizer. I can't use hormones. I can't use antibiotics. No pesticides are allowed anywhere on my property. Right. So it, um, um, i trying to think what else. It takes three years to be chemical free before you're allowed to sell anything that's organic, certified organic. Right. And if, uh, if, you have to use, if you have to use antibiotics then, for a particular animal to, then, to fix a problem, that animal cannot be sold as organic. No, she now becomes no different than any other farm meat. word C certified and actually if it has the certification of the CFIA the Canadian local organic now if you were choosing a tomato <laughs> based just on how these two look which one would you choose well for sure I would choose that one the smaller one taste that one okay yeah definitely taste that one mm. Which one tastes better? Well, that one tastes better. The bigger one? Yeah. Why why the smaller farm as opposed to buying from the larger wholesale suppliers who get their product from the, the big factory farms? Um, well, when I started this business, I came from it uh, from a chef's point of view. So I was a chef for about 15 years before I opened the shop. Um, and doing that uh, allowed me to have access to uh, these products from these great small farms. So that was the, the, the kind of genesis for starting the shop. Um, it's very easy and, and much more profitable to buy directly from, you know, uh, some sales rep from Cargill or something like that. And I, and I understand why people do that, mainly because of the consistency issues, I find. Like, um, uh, the, the federal grading system means that no matter if you're getting beef, like Canadian prime beef from Alberta or from PEI, it's all going to have those same kind of markers of, of, of marbling, uh, tenderness, all that kind of stuff. Uh, when you're working with small worms, it is a little bit more, um, uh, I don't want to use the word inconsistent, but it's a little bit more difficult to, to achieve that consistency in uh, on those markers. It is, on the other hand, much more, in my mind, uh, or in my experience, uh, much more interesting in terms of uh, uh, flavor profiles and nuances because that animal might have been raised on pasture a little bit longer you'll get a lot of herbaceous notes from the grass um, also different breeds of, of pigs for example like Berkshire's Tamworth uh, small farmers will approach raising those as opposed to the large commodity hog farmers will they don't know do that so it's much more important and interesting for me to work with these smaller farmers than go to some sales rep from wherever. What what do you suggest that people do in order to get better food? Um, farmers markets, well I guess chicken you can't sell farmers markets, but go, go to the farm where yeah. you can sell the chicken. Um, grow your own chicken. Be experimental with, with how you can pasture it in your backyard, you know, if you can, yeah. if you can, if you're allowed. Um, just contact farmers, say how you want it grown, yeah. and if, if they, they should grow it for you the way that you should be aware of, of, of uh, what the best way to grow free-range chicken is, you know. So, 
free range isn't just on a dirt pad either, you know, like outside and able to run around, but just fed grains, you know, free range is outside, on grass. We move our chickens weekly, so they get fresh grass fresh. all the time, yep. uh, fresh area anyway. And um, contact a farmer that you trust and, and tell them how you want it raised and they should do it for you. It's interesting because there's in the last 10 years, the, or, the, the industry has shifted to trying to uh, uh, appeal to people who have those sensibilities and want those things. Um, so even large grocery stores are trying to have that kind of natural, antibiotic-free um, uh, kind of department in their meat selection. Uh, the problem is, is that all that meat could come from some giant conglomerate in Brazil or wherever. Like you don't, you don't really know. Uh, so for I, I recommend, and a lot of people do this already. Uh, especially in small towns, um, but I recommend uh, anyone in the city or in wherever you live um, to approach uh, farmers directly. Um, they will sell like individual cuts through farmers markets, which now there's like more than there's ever been before, like, or direct from the farm. And a large part of it is not just that our food perhaps doesn't have the flavor we wish it did, it's that we just are used to now a really sugary, sweet, fatty, um, flavor, you know, so our palates have evolved and I don't mean evolution in the strictly biological sense, but in the last, you know, few decades, we've just gotten accustomed to stuff that tastes a lot sweeter and, um, you know, sort of unnaturally so. Right. Um, and I think once you have that taste of that, you know, that's why some nutritional scientists talk about food addiction and it's not food addiction in the sense of heroin addiction, certainly, but it is, you know, that craving then for that sort of sugary, sweet, fatty, salty um, food. And once you're used to it, it's really hard to, to go back, I think. Um, you know, and food scientists are designing our food to make it so that it's hard to go back. This one. The bigger one? Yeah. Oh, this is good. Which one? So the, what, you think the bigger one tastes better? Yeah. This one. The bigger one? Yeah. All right. This one's like it's been bleached. Yeah. The bigger one? Yeah. Mmm, yeah. yummy. That one's way more delicious. Yeah, that one's amazing. This one. Our food has changed, the way we eat has changed, and neither for the better. The big question still to be answered here in Canada is whether or not our supply management programs, which effectively shut out smaller producers, actually work to institutionalize and even incentivize the production of lower quality food. You know, chefs are fond of saying that we eat with our eyes first. You have to wonder whether today many of them say that because they know the actual food has no flavor. Thanks for watching.